Okay, we're here to another integral from the MIT Integration B 2011. This one was problem number five. We have the integral of sine cubed x plus sine squared x minus two sine x minus two all over sine squared x plus two sine x plus one dx. Okay, this problem may look kind of familiar to you. Typically what we have in a problem like this, something very similar to this denominator where we have sine x, but usually what we might have in the numerator would be like cosine x. If we had a cosine x in the numerator, we'd just do a u substitution for sine x. We'd have our du in the numerator, factor it, and then use straightforward methods. And those are usually pretty easy, not too bad. For this one, I think we will try to do something similar. We want to do factoring, but we don't have a cosine here in the numerator. So I think what we need to do is do the factoring first and see where we can get with it, just because we don't have an obvious u substitution right away. So what I'm going to do with my algebra here is I'm not just going to set sine x equal to t in order to factor this thing. And so what we're looking at, just breaking down this integrand, we're gonna have t cubed plus t squared minus two t minus two all over t squared plus two t plus one. And first of all, I noticed that this here is gonna be a perfect square. So I'm gonna write the denominator here as t plus one squared for this. Then in the numerator, what I can do for these first two terms, I can actually factor a t squared out here. So this is gonna become t squared times t plus one. And then on these last two terms, I'll just factor a minus two out, but that's also gonna give me a t plus one right there. So what's gonna happen, you may notice, is that we have this t plus one term in common. So what I'm gonna do is just factor that out down here. We'll have a t plus one we pull out, and that's gonna give me from our second term here, t squared minus two, all over t plus one squared. But then we can cancel this with one of these, and then I'm just gonna rewrite this t squared minus two. I think it's gonna set up a little nicer if I can break this out. Instead of writing it as minus two, I'm gonna write it as minus one, minus one. And I gave it all that space, because what I wanna do actually is split it into two fractions. We'll have t plus one in the denominator in each one, because I'm trying to set up my integral, but we're not quite ready for that yet. And then we'll take this t squared minus one, and let's factor that as well as t plus one, t minus one. Because what that's gonna do is give me more cancellation, just like that. So I think that's about as much algebra as I can do on it. So what I'm gonna do is take it, again, remember t is sine x, we'll put our sine x back in here and put it back in the integral and continue. Okay, so you notice now that after all that algebra, we've got a lot of simplification and a much simpler looking integral. So we'll start with this and just integrate this, and I forgot a dx right here, sorry about that. So we'll integrate sine x, and that's gonna give me minus cosine x here. And then integrating the one, that's just gonna give me a minus x. And then we have this, we still have this other integral left to deal with dx over one plus sine x. Okay, now from here what I wanna do is focus on this integral. And what we could do is actually have quite a few ways to do this. And I think I did a video recently, I think a half angle substitution works well here, but what I'm gonna do instead is actually this time just multiply by the conjugate. So we're gonna multiply this by one minus sine x here in the numerator and denominator. Now when we multiply these together, we're gonna to end up with one minus sine squared x, but that's actually, this is actually the same thing as cosine squared x. I think what I'll do is come down here and rewrite this. So I'm gonna have one minus sine x over cosine squared x dx, but then I'm gonna break this into two integrals. So the first one's gonna be one over cosine squared x, so that's just gonna be secant squared x. And then the second one, this is actually gonna be sine over cosine, is gonna give me tangent. And then we have another cosine, so that's gonna give me secant. But now we have two really well-known integrals, so the integral of secant squared is gonna be tan x, and the integral of tan x secant x is gonna be secant x. And now from here I can take this and we can just plug this back in. I don't wanna forget that we have, uh, we have this other stuff here and I don't wanna forget this minus sign. Okay, now at this point, the first time I did it, I just circled it and called it good. But then I noticed this doesn't match the solution MIT has. And then where I see the problem is really here with the secant x and tan x. I think, I think this part and this part is fine. If we just take a look at secant x and tan x, okay, this is gonna be the same thing as one over cosine x minus sine x over cosine x. And we can put these together, right? And we'll have one minus sine x over cosine x. And now the trouble with having cosine x in the denominator here is that some values, this is gonna be zero and we're dividing by zero, like particularly if we look at pi over two or minus pi over two. Now I think minus pi over two is okay because we can't have minus pi over two in the original integral because that's gonna create a zero situation here. But if you look at just pi over two, if you plug pi over two, if we take pi over two and we plug it in for x here in our denominator, 
that's gonna give me one plus two plus one. We're dividing by four. So pi over two is fine in the original integral, but it's not fine here. And so even though this is an indefinite integral, we still want the domain to be consistent with our answer in the original problem. So what I'm gonna do is go back and manipulate this a little bit so I can do is multiply this top and bottom by cosine x over cosine x. This is gonna give me cosine squared x in the denominator. This is kind of reversing what we did earlier over here. So we'll have cosine squared in the denominator here, but I'm gonna write that as one minus sine squared x. But then I can factor this denominator as one minus sine x times one plus sine x. But then I can cancel here and here. So then here, all I'm left with is just cosine x over one plus sine x. And all I need to do is let's just take that and we'll put that back in here. And we're gonna use this to replace our secant x minus tan x. Okay, and now we have our final solution. That's just gonna be minus cosine x minus x plus this thing over here, which is just cosine x over one plus sine x plus c. And that's it. Okay, so it's always a little tricky when you end up in this situation. You have to do a little extra work. So we'll stop at there. Thanks everyone for watching today. Have a great day.